crystal blessings, everybody. I decided I am going to do one of my favorite experiments that I do with students, um, and that is growing crystals in a lab. Um, so you can see how crystals grow from a super saturated solution um, that was heated and then cooled. Um, so this is um, basically what you'll need is distilled water. You can either purchase it or distill it yourself by boiling it. If you have an area where your water source is not real hard water, meaning it doesn't contain a lot of minerals, um, you, just, you don't want any mineral introduction. You don't even want dust introduced into this. You need it to be pure, pure, pure. And um, you do want to have some kind of a glass container, not metal pots or anything like that. Um, and you want it to be glass so that you can see what's taking place inside. You want it to be see-through. Um, and the Pyrex, I know this is not easy stuff for everybody to get. I work in a lab, so it's really cool working in a lab because I can get all these crazy things. Um, Pyrex, uh, not all Pyrex is meant to have boiling water in it, okay? So just to get started, um, you also need, this again is not something easy to get. Uh, you can get it online, and it's often purchased by photographers or, you know, at least the kind that used to develop their pictures in a, in a dark room, right? Is that what it's called, dark room? Um, this is called photographer's hypos, or hypo crystals. Um, what, what it's really is, it says it right here, sodium thiosulfate, okay, pentahydrate. And it comes as these little, I don't want to put my hand in and pull any out because again, we don't want to introduce anything into this foreign, um, but there are these little pellets is what they come as, okay? And then um, I'm going to go ahead and show you all of this on camera. Um, I'm going to take very, very hot water, heated near boiling but not quite, and then um, constantly stirring it with a glass rod, again, because we don't want to introduce anything else into that solution. And um, I'm going to go ahead and do that in the beaker and then cover it immediately with something. Um, I should have brought my glass lids, but this will be fine. This is just cheesecloth and I'll cover it to, just to make sure that dust doesn't get introduced. And then you're gonna let it cool on its own for several hours. You don't wanna put it in the refrigerator or anything like that. Just let it cool on its own, just like it would naturally. And um, you don't want anything to happen. You don't wanna see any crystallization or anything like that happen. And so what you had is a hot solution and you let it cool down, which is exactly what happens in nature when we make crystals. Maybe. Ooh, I see something yellow in there. I don't know what that is. I don't know why it's in there. I'm not grossed out or anything. I'm just worried because nothing is supposed to be introduced. And I think it was in the hypo solution already. Darn, darn, darn. You don't want anything to contaminate the solution. It's getting hot. Okay, so I don't know if I already said this already or not, but I'm just going to recap. So um, I have the cheesecloth over the cooled solution. This is a super saturated solution. We have the sodium theosulfate pentahydrate um, saturated in that solution. Um, I heated it up almost to boiling and took it off the heat. And I'm hoping, hoping, hoping that this is going to work this time. I've got a little pellet here of the sodium thiosulfate, the, the um, photographer's hypo solution. And so this is going to be seeding the super saturated solution. We had a heated solution and then it naturally cooled, just like it would in nature. Okay, so if this works correctly, let me just bring it a little bit closer to you here. Okay, when I drop this in, it'll start to crystallize or start the crystallization process happening at the bottom there and you should start to see all the crystals really coming together in a minute here crystals crystals forming everywhere can you see that action happening at the bottom action at the bottom there okay the seeds have started the process and the crystals are really coming together at the bottom. All kinds of action going on. Crystals just growing.
right before our eyes, the crystals are forming. Okay, so the supersaturated solution has been seeded by yet another crystal. It's kind of like the chicken and the egg phenomenon or that, that saying that which came first. So you kind of need the seed to get the crystallization process going. And some scientists talk of a crystal gene, um, which was the first one to come on the scene to start this whole process, which each different type of crystal. Okay, so you see the crystals at the bottom. And the longer I let this sit, the more crystals that will form and form and form. Now something else you can do, um, which would take longer, is to do a supersaturated salt solution. Take some salt, dissolve it in water, keep dissolving, keep dissolving until you can't put any more salt in the water. You just keep stirring and dissolve it, same process, till no more salt will dissolve. And then just let it cool naturally, and then let it evaporate naturally. And you'll see these amazing salt crystals forming as the water evaporates out of the solution. It will leave behind all these amazing salt crystals. Um, looking very different than the salt crystals that you started with. They'll be larger in the cubic form because that is the crystal system of halite, which also is salt. I wanted to record the movement that's going on inside the water. I haven't stirred it or anything. Um, all that movement is the molecules arranging themselves for the crystallization process that's taking place at the bottom of the beaker. So you see all that flickering the crystals that have formed at a smaller molecular level are reflecting and refract refracting light and they're arranging themselves from the bottom up that's how crystal grows from the internal structure the atoms and the molecules arrange themselves and they grow from the bottom up and the inside out and that's what's occurring there. And you see all those little flashes of light in there. Those are little rainbows catching on the crystal lattices. It's really cool. I hope the camera's catching all the swirling that's happening. And it's really amazing. You know, they know what to do. Those molecules are arranging themselves, doing what needs to be done for the crystals to form. And maybe I should have mentioned at the beginning, this isn't like going to be a super fast process, but this is much faster than what happens with, say, like a quartz crystal, which takes very long time, sometimes millions of years to form itself. But, you know, geologists really aren't exactly sure because nobody's been around to watch a quartz crystal grow naturally within a vein inside Mother Earth's crust. Um, We've never seen the process happen. We know how it happens. We can make it happen in a lab. And as you can see here, we can do it with um, a different type of substance. But we've never watched it happen in nature. So no one's exactly sure how long it takes. They have, you know, guesstimates that it takes a very long time. But we're not exactly sure. And the cooling process has to happen slowly. If it happens too quickly, you'll get an amorphous solid, which means it won't have a chance to crystallize. And that's how you end up with, like, um, obsidian is an amorphous solid. Do you see all that swirling in there? It's just amazing. Oh, I'm just a complete and total geek. I love this. I'm in complete and total amazement. I love this. Um, so when the cooling process happens slower, you have a chance for crystals to form, and um, that's how you get the crystal formation. Okay, because um, all crystals are minerals, but not all minerals are crystals. So an amorphous solid doesn't qualify as a crystal because it doesn't have that regular repeating geometric pattern. Well, you can pattern. see that one. Yeah, you can over here on the left. Some long crystals in the middle, in the center there growing um, but it kind of stalled out and that is because we have impurities in the in the solution okay so hopefully if nothing else this has made you appreciate the growing of crystals and that conditions have to be absolutely perfect and just so or it's not going to happen so the next time you look at a crystal, realize that everything had to come together. Ooh.
<laughs> we've got an avalanche of crystals happening from the top. Everything had to come perfectly together, had to be absolutely right. All the components needed to be there in order for that crystal to grow. So I hope you really appreciate its beauty and the handiwork of Mother so Earth's kitchen. So I just kitchen. wanted to give you a little update. Um, it's been a few, about 10 minutes longer now. And take a look. See, we've got a nice crystal growth there. So, really pretty ones in there, actually. And again, we can just start the whole process over again if we just heat this up and melt them down and start the whole thing over again. Look at that one there. You see that one right there? Pretty awesome. So not as quick and dramatic as I wanted it to be, but still gets the point across. Crystal growth is not just some random event. Okay, namaste.